Hello, I'm Aviex Toycat, and welcome back to the History of Videos. Let me go through the history of Minecraft NPC villages. The reason I think they do this is because they're one of the most iconic structures in the entire game, and NPC villages themselves are one of the most amusing, most overused, and just one of the, you know, key parts of Minecraft that I figured I had to cover in today's videos. Hopefully you all do enjoy this, because I'm going to be covering how villages went from looking like this and being populated by these, into looking like this and being populated by these. So yeah, if you do all enjoy the video, like and let me know, because it helps out the channel, and let's know you do like these History of Videos. They take a little bit longer, but I love finding out the weird stuff that you get from here because personally I never knew that villagers used to look like this I hadn't seen the screenshot till before today's video and let's get straight into explaining exactly how that came out and why villagers were going to look so vastly different because basically NPC villagers were an idea Notch had had for quite some time it was one of the earliest ideas of Minecraft just having a structure that you could you know go and uh, you know go go and check out and you know like have NPC villagers trade with you do other stuff with you and it was one of those big things that he wanted to have but it became this giant project that he kept promising so he never really put it into the game until Minecraft 1.8 rolled around so this was towards the end of Notch's like time at Minecraft, but basically for the 1.8 update, because it was the final one before the full release of the game, you know, Minecraft actually coming out, basically what Notch decided to do is he decided to just fill on, pull a bunch of the features that he always wanted in there, and one of those was NPC villagers. So uh, you can see from this first interview that he wanted uh, NPC villagers to be something you could either destroy if you don't really care about them, or that you could help the villagers out and perhaps get some rewards from them. I really like that personally, and uh, then when we saw our first screenshot of the NPC villagers, it looked really, really cool. So yeah, here was the first screenshot of NPC villagers we ever got from Notch, and as you can see, it's so massive different from what we see as an MC village today and let's start with what that is so first of all the houses look vastly different you know they're not made from stairs and stuff as you can see it's just a big cobblestone block with some you know wood blocks on the roof so uh, the roof even goes out a little bit further there's a lot of changes right there but the other interesting thing you might not spot because it's kind of a small detail is the fact that they're also made from mossy cobblestone so they're going to be kind of more like you know mossy you know, I guess the mob spawners more than they were going to be like the actual houses which again very intriguing to me also you'll notice how the sizes are just all over the place like some are tiny some are big some are weirdly shaped uh, uh, you'll notice how the spacing is non-uniform. There's no, like, central well like there is today. It's just they're all over the place. There's no pathway connecting them. They just happen to be kind of near each other, which I guess is more like an actual village in real life, but a little bit uh, less like what you expect from Minecraft today. So, yeah, here's what a village used to look like. As you can see, entirely unaffected by biomes. It looks like the villagers might have even grown those uh, mushrooms themselves, or maybe the mushrooms came with a village. It's hard to say, but that's not something you usually just find in a plains biome, is it? Anyway, with that said, uh, basically this, this village was what it was going to look like, and we knew that the village was going to be populated by pigmen. So we knew this from way, way back, because uh, Notch, uh, like really early in the uh, development phase of Minecraft, he actually gave someone a bacon cape just for suggesting the idea of pigmen because he heard pigmen and thought, that's a cool idea. Why don't we have pig people that populate villages and can be the MC villagers? So yeah, for a little bit, someone actually got a bacon cape in reward just for suggesting this idea. He got it taken away later. But yeah, these were going to be the people populating villages. However, when villagers first released, they didn't actually have anyone. And then later on, you know, because it was in uh, Jeb's hand rather than Notch's hand, they eventually shifted into being actual villagers. But yeah, for a little bit, villagers were going to look like this and they were going to be populated by these people. And I absolutely love that idea a lot. So, yeah, how did villagers change from this? Well, basically, Notch was working on villagers for quite some time, but he eventually decided that he just couldn't do it, and he handed off the work to Jeb so that he could work on, uh, you know, reworking biomes and tweaking the combat, you know, the, the first combat update, because before then, uh, you know, there was a really basic set of biomes. Before then, uh, the combat was massively different than it is today. Basically, uh, Notch decided to go off and fix that, while Jeb fixed on the uh, procedural architecture, as he calls it. So, yeah, the first thing we saw from Jeb was just a day later, where Jeb says that, oh, I'm having problems with, uh, you know, the last of setting everyone out some fire, but just a few short weeks later, we did see the final release of 1.8, where villages looked a bit more like this. So you can see how much already, you know, Jeb had changed the village. Uh, this is the more traditional village you might picture. It's got some planters, so they have their own, like, proper crops, which are always in a uniform uh, thing. There's only certain types of houses villages can make, and they look a bit prettier, if you ask me, <laughs> yeah, than the houses uh, Notch had made. As you can see, uh, there's also a blacksmith. There's only going to be one of those villages. It's all centered around the well. You can see most of the elements from today's village in what Jeb did then create. So uh, the, the, the village village didn't just remain untouched from then, and that's where most of the changes actually came in, because villages are perhaps one of the most changed features in Minecraft right now, because even after they came out in the 1.8 update, it was the 1.0 update just after that, that they decided to add villages to them, because there was a little bit of the game where there actually wasn't any MC villages, it was just, oh, these are a structure you find, they don't actually do anything yet, it was a little bit later when they first added testificates, so testificates is actually what, you know, the, the correct name for villages was for a very short amount of time, testificates were added to the village, and you could just kind of look at them, they didn't do anything, they were just a mob that were created, and of course they look a bit more like what you expect from a villager today. That's right, they scrapped the pigmen, which a part of me is always going to be, you know, regretful about, but they did add something which was equally amusing, because it was basically a human mob. For the first time, there was like a true other mob that looked like a human, I mean besides the Steve one, which is a hollow thing. But yeah, basically uh, the first ever time we could have something to do, but it was just a testificate who looked in the village, and he even had a testificate name tag. However, it was very quickly removed in 1.1, they decided to remove the testificate name tag, and uh, also add blacksmith chests. So at that point, you know, when there was just... Uh, 
you know, MC villagers that didn't do anything. It was just a nice find you'd run across and be like, oh, I guess I'll leave these villagers be now. However, with 1.1, they added their first use to the village, which was blacksmith chests. So blacksmith spawned before then, but then you, after this, you could find chests, and these chests were very, very valuable stuff. You could find diamonds, you could find diamond swords, you could find iron armor, you could find a bunch of really awesome stuff, and that was with the 1.1 update. So this was the start of villagers being useful, but it wasn't until, uh, you know, 1.2 when they decided to make the villagers, like, something you could work on yourself, so expandable. Uh, if you don't know right now, if every three doors you have a village, you can have one extra village population. After this update, you could actually expand your village as much as you like, or you could compress it. You could do a bunch of stuff, and also they added zombie sieges for the first time. So you actually had to protect your village if you cared about the villagers, but there still wasn't really much of a point because you only need their loot now until the 1.3 update came out and actually added trading to the game. That's right, trading only came in with 1.3 and still, by the way, hasn't come to the Pocket Edition as of making this video. It's one of those features that's so, so key to a village today, but yet didn't exist until just 1.3. Also, when it first came out, it actually used rubies instead of uh, emeralds, and the only reason they made the shift over to emeralds instead of ruby, we would have had ruby or etc. The only reason we actually switched was because Dinner Bone is actually slightly colorblind, and he got a bit confused with uh, redstone and uh, uh, rubies it was. So, yeah, basically they eventually decided on calling it emeralds, entirely different to everything else, and that's why emeralds are green, and why there is rubies in the game files to this day. Fun little fact you might have known. But let's move on to the next update. 1.4 added even more stuff to the villages, made it so villagers actually tracked your popularity. So, uh, you know, if you had a low popularity, what they do is, you know, obviously they <laughs> set the iron golems on you if you get it low enough. If you have a high popularity, they'll give you better trades, and they'll, it's easier to go up the list, which is kind of useful. And also, they made it so there were new crops to be found in villages, the potatoes and the carrots. So yeah, every single update made the villages even more useful. The only one uh, between 1.0 uh, you know, and 1.10 that didn't was 1.6, because even 1.5 added some minor changes to the way the wells work to make them a bit more consistent in the biomes, and they also added uh, some small changes to uh, the lamps to make them a bit more a bit better. So uh, 1.6 was skipped, like I said, but then 1.7 added a brand new way to find villages, which was in the brand new savannah biome, so savannah villages for 1.7. 1.8 made it so there were better pathways and better wells. 1.9 added, uh, you know, beetroot crops, which was a really cool addition from the pocket edition, which technically existed there for some time, but still, they actually added that to the game for the first time. And then 1.10 was another massive village fill update, which uh, I guess really shaped villages to being this entirely different thing again, because it added tiger villages, so a brand new fourth type of village, as well as making the other villages, like, match their biome a bit better. Uh, they've added bridges so that if a village goes through water, instead of just being a mess, it now actually has a bridge to make it so the villagers can walk there, and so can you. Uh, pathways made out of grass, uh, sorry, pathways made out of grass, path blocks, it's confusing how to say that. They made abandoned zombie villages a thing where you could just run across this village, and one every 50 times, like enough to shock you and not enough to be predictable, uh, you'll just run for a village that's been entirely abandoned and it just has zombie villages left in there. A uh, funny console exclusive especially is they're just regular zombies, not zombie villages. Uh, they also tweaked the blacksmiths uh, and the pathways, and also added some just other minor changes to make the villages a bit more logical, consistent, like sort of biomes and stuff. And yeah, that is uh, where we are right now. It's been, you know, 10 update, uh, 11 updates since 1.0. 10 of them have changed villages, a lot of them in pretty significant ways. And it looks like the village is always going to be one of those things that changes so much in the future. So that is how we got from that village uh, over there to this village over here. As you can see, there are just some key differences that slowly develop over time that just make them ent essentially entirely as uh, different structures. I like to see some more fundamental changes to the villages, like maybe some different structures and Entirely, maybe some ones which spawn underground. I'd like to see more stuff like that happen because I think that would be a cool way to upgrade it from now. But even where we are right now, I think it's cool how every update just adds a little bit of something to one of the you know easiest to find, one of the coolest, one of the most visited structures. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing more villager stuff done in the future. But in case you are curious as to uh, how this whole thing progressed, now hopefully this video uh, fulfilled some of that uh, curiosity for you. So if you did enjoy this video, like and let me know because it helps out the channel a lot. And let's know you do like uh, these sorts of videos and want to see more of them. Uh, share them if you really liked it because it gets the video out to more people uh, that really does help out the channel a lot and uh, also subscribe if you're new around here because I make videos like this one every single day on my channel and if you subscribe you'll see them daily on your homepage. Uh, the next history of video I'm making is probably going to be on controllers because I've been like intensely curious uh, interested I guess I should say about how controllers have slowly developed into like where we are with the Nintendo Switch where it's like a joy con or something so I'll probably be making that at some point soon but for now I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.